Good morning, and welcome to Church on the Rock. We're so happy that you guys have decided to join us this morning, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting to share with you guys uh, some of the stuff that the Lord has been sharing with me. And so uh, I just want to take a moment and pray. So, Lord Jesus, I just thank you for today. I thank you for this opportunity. Um, I thank you that you were with us. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord, your blessings, your insight, your wisdom. Heavenly Father, and I just thank you for the sons of Issachar anointing that we understand the times and we know what to do, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you that you magnify your voice and that you open our ears, that you lead us, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that you would open our eyes and help us to see you moving. Lord, and soften our hearts, keep us sensitive to what it is that you're wanting to do, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask that you would speak to each and every one of us specifically concerning what it is that you would have us to do, where you would have us to go, Heavenly Father. Lord, we love you, we love you, we love you. I invite you into this message. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would anoint the words that are spoken, and I just ask that you would speak to all of us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. <laughs> well, guys, um, it's been a little while. It's been a little while since I've got to speak with you, and, uh, and I'm pretty excited. I, I know that the Lord has been sharing a lot of things with me. He's been a lot of, sharing a lot of things with all of us. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I have a few bullet points that I'd like to go over. Um, uh, we're going to spend a lot of time today in Numbers chapter 13 and chapter 14. If you have your Bibles, please uh, go ahead and open them up, uh, grab your notebooks, um, get ready to take some notes, and uh, I'm pretty excited. Uh, so, so earlier, earlier uh, this week, actually, I, I stumbled across something, and they were just some quick bullet points from Smith Wigglesworth, and I thought they were astonishing. I thought they were amazing. I thought they were awesome. And so I just want to share them with you. And, and, and what he said, he said that there was, there's four principles that we really need to maintain. And principle one is read the Word of God. And I thought, well, that's a no-brainer. And principle number two was consume the Word of God until the Word of God consumes you. And I thought that was awesome. And the third one was believe the Word of God. And, and then the fourth one was act on the Word of God. And so we have read, consume, believe, and act. And as I was sitting on them, or I was, I was thinking about them, and I was thinking about how I can apply those to my life, I felt like the Holy Spirit said to me, now I want you to put one even before that, and that is pray. Pray. And so I feel like the Lord was saying, telling me to, to pray and ask the Lord what He wants me to read when I read the Word of God, then consume the Word of God until it consumes me, and then after that, believe the Word of God, and then act on the Word of God. And so those were some things that I really feel like the Lord was uh, sharing with me. He was giving me just some instruction in how to uh, navigate through these times. And, and that was pretty exciting. So uh, again, uh, the primary, what we're going to talk about today is Numbers chapter 13 and 14. And, uh, and I would like to kind of go over a recap I think it was uh, two weeks ago, maybe either two weeks ago or three weeks ago, I spoke on, on the book of Haggai. And I want to recap on that because I believe some of these things are tied together. Uh, I want to recap on the book of Haggai. It's only two chapters, and there's actually five uh, small little subparts to these two chapters. And the first one is a call to rebuild God's temple. The second one is obedience to God's call. The third one is the new temple's splendor. The fourth one is the blessings promised for obedience. And the fifth one is promises for Zerubbabel. Now, I'm actually going to start uh, with just a couple small scriptures um, out of Haggai because I, I really believe that the Lord has helped me to tie these together with, with uh, you know, Haggai and, and the book of Numbers. And so if I could... If I could get there, I'm going to start with uh, Haggai chapter 2, uh, verses 6 through 9. And I'm just going to read you his word. This is out of the New Living Translation. It says, For this is what the Lord Almighty says, In just a little while I will again shake the heavens and the earth. I will shake the oceans and the dry land too. 
I will shake all the nations, and the treasures of all nations will come to this temple. I will fill this place with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, says the Lord Almighty. The future glory of this temple will be greater than its past glory, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place I will bring peace. I, the Lord Almighty, have spoken. And I believe uh, right now we're actually coming into a place of the new temple. The temple being you and being me, not necessarily a building. It is uh, the Holy Spirit lives inside of me. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. If you've asked the Lord to be your Savior, if you've asked Jesus to come into your heart and to be your Savior, then you now are the temple in which the Holy Spirit resides. And so the Lord is beginning to build this new temple. And, uh, and that's pretty exciting. Uh, so the second part that I wanted to, to uh, read and how these tie together, which is a blessing. It's a blessing for me. They're little kisses on the cheeks. Um, how the last thing that I talked about is going to kind of tie into this. It's Haggai chapter 2, verse 18. And <laughs> it says right here, On this 18th day of December, the day when the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, carefully consider this. I am giving you a promise now while the seed is still in the barn. Before you have harvested your grain and before the grapevine, the fig tree, and the pomegranate, and the olive tree have produced their crops from this day onward, I will bless you. Now, I don't think that we are fully coming to uh, the full manifestation of the Lord's new temple. I believe that we're actually in the process of it. Uh, we just came out of... Uh, we just came out of Passover. I believe the last day of Passover was April 16th of 2020. And, and so when Passover for the Israelites had happened, what that was was that's when they actually left Egypt and they left bondage. And uh, they were actually headed to Mount Sinai to receive instruction, instruction from the Lord. And uh, th that, was, that should have only been a, a little bit of time. And it actually was 47 days from the time they left Egypt until they got to Mount Sinai. And then they was at Mount Sinai. Uh, Moses went up on the Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights and re received instruction. And uh, that number 40 is very significant, very significant throughout the whole Bible and actually where we are right now in, in, in really our historical timeline is uh, this is the first time in, in my lifetime that we've actually had to honor and observe Passover. We actually uh, had to stay indoors and, and not just celebrate it, but actually uh, have honor and revere for it, respect it, and really ponder what it was as we were going through this, this, uh, this virus pandemic. And so that was really amazing. Uh, and I think that... <clears throat> As we're passing through or as we're coming out of bondage, we are in a time right now where we are receiving instruction from the Lord, kind of as Moses received the instructions or some people would call it the Ten Commandments, but there was actually so much more than that that was given to Moses for him to give to the people. So uh, I just wanted you to take a little note of that. Uh, Haggai chapter 2 verses 19 where I underlined right here specifically, uh, he says, I am giving you the promise now while the seed is still in the barn. The seed is being implanted into us right now. Uh, it, it's not fully time for the harvest that we're going to receive, but it was a little kiss on the cheek when the Lord actually, I underlined it, grapevine, fig tree, and pomegranate. So that's the actual precursor to uh, what we're going to be spending a majority of our time today, which is Numbers chapter 13. And so, again, if you can turn to that, uh, I'm going to read some of it. I'm going to do my best not to read all of it, uh, just little spots and uh, picks and points. But if you would take a few moments of your time to actually read all of Numbers chapter 13 and 14, that would be absolutely amazing. So, uh, Numbers chapter 13 and 14, here's an overview of that as well. Uh, the first little portion is uh, the 12... Scouts explore Canaan. Canaan is the promised land that the Lord has given the Israelites. And when they actually left, uh, when they left Egypt, they were headed to Canaan, but they stopped at Mount Sinai to get uh, some some instructions on what they should and should not do. So the second part 
of this is the scouting report of the 12 scouts that were sent out. This is the report that the scouts gave back to Moses. Uh, number three of the overview is the people rebel against the Lord. Uh, number four is Moses intercedes for the people. And number five is the Lord punishes the Israelites. <laughs> so uh, what I want to start with is I'm just going to go ahead and read a little bit of uh, Numbers chapter 13 verses 1 and 2 out of the New Living Translation says, The Lord now said to Moses, Send men to explore the land of Canaan, the land I am giving to Israel. Send one leader from each of the twelve ancestral tribes. Now, that's pretty amazing. So, <laughs> as we go through trying times, we must hold to the promises of God. We got to hold to his promises. And, and this actually is a promise right here. It says, the Lord said to Moses, send men to explore the land of Canaan, the land that I am giving Israel. That, that's a promise. The Lord is giving this land to Israel. And, and I just want to make a note uh, in, in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, the Lord says, God is not a man that, she, that he should lie. God is not a man that he should lie. When the Lord says something, you can put it in the bank. It's going to happen. And so it's super important for us to be listening to what the Lord is saying because his, his word is his covenant. So um, <laughs> I wanted to talk about <clears throat> first, we got to hold on to the promises of God as we're going through trying times. Right now, we are in a trying time. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, nobody really knows, uh, you know, the ins or the outs. Uh, new information is coming out regularly that seems to contradict the old information. And so we're, we're kind of, it's really important for us to press into what God has said in order for us to uh, continue functioning in strength and courage and, and even wisdom, um, but not to act foolishly, but rely on the promises of the Lord. So, <clears throat> I turned my page backwards <laughs> on accident. So the Lord sends out the, the 12 spies. Um, I don't know why we call them spies. Uh, they were actually leaders from each of the 12 tribes, which is very important. Uh, Numbers 13 23 it says when they came to what is known as the valley of a skull they cut down a cluster of grapes so large that it took two of them to carry on a pole between them they also took samples of the pomegranates and the figs at that time the israelites renamed the valley of a skull cluster because of the cluster of grapes they had cut there now why i was saying that it was a kiss on the cheek was because the last time i talked it was in haggai and there was direct reference to grapevines pomegranates and figs and so as i was asking the lord what he wanted me to share and he put me over here into the book of numbers uh, he makes direct correlation of this again note that the grapes the pomegranates and the figs uh, they actually they represent god's blessing and his provision for the land and that is, that's exciting for me. That's super exciting for me. And we're going to go down here a little bit further. Um, uh, Numbers chapter 13, 25 and 27, it says, After exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned to Moses and Aaron, the people of Israel of Kadesh, in the wilderness of Paran. They reported to the whole community what they had seen and showed them the fruit they had taken from the land. Again, I underlined this right here. It's pretty important to me that the Lord sent, uh, or Moses sent these, uh, the leaders of each tribe out into the land of Canaan for them to explore, and they explored that land for 40 days. I'm telling you, that number is very significant. Uh, we are in a time directly after Passover where we are to be receiving instruction for what the Lord is coming, what the Lord is bringing forth in this newness of, of his kingdom. And it just, it's just funny to me how, how he allows for these, uh, I don't even, they're not even coincidences. For lack of better terms, that's what I'm going to say. But these coincidences to happen to actually, he leaves us uh, little tidbits of information that we're on the right track. And so what I want to say is how is it for 40 days, 12 guys can go explore land. They see the exact same thing, but they come back with two different conclusions. And what, what I'm saying is, is these 12 guys went and they've explored the land and, and, and they all come back and it starts out really well. It starts out really amazing. 
Uh, they all begin to say uh, that they drop the grapes at, at Moses' feet and they begin to give him the report of what they seen. And uh, <laughs> so you have, <clears throat> you have Joshua and Caleb. They say, let's go at once and take the land for we can certainly... All right, hold on. I'm getting ahead of myself just a little bit. So the 12 people or the 12 the 12 uh, leaders of the tribes, their report to Moses was, we have arrived in the land you sent to see us, and it is indeed a magnificent country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here is some of its proof. Here is some of its fruit as the proof. And so they all go out to this land, and they all see these amazing things, and they all see some awesomeness, which is great because the Lord has promised them this land, and uh, that's pretty exciting. But then this is the funny part is at verse 28, it says, But the people living there are powerful, and their cities and towns are fortified and very large. We also saw the descendants of Anak who are living there. The, Amal the Amalekites live in the Negev, and the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites live in the hill country. The Canaanites live along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea and along the Jordan Valley. It I don't understand how they can come back with a report and start so promising and then it immediately takes a left turn and they all begin, uh, actually 10 of them, begin to focus on the negative things that they've seen instead of the positive things they see. And so I guess my question is, is how can 12 guys go and see something for 40 days and uh, you know explore the land and they come back, they all seen the exact same thing, and they come back with two totally different perspectives. Um, Caleb and Joshua say, let's at once go and take the land, for we can certainly conquer it. And the other ten say, we can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. And, and that caused me to ponder, how do we get to two different, or two distinct different uh, versions of what they were looking at? And what I jotted down was uh, is that in my life, I've come to believe that what I believe is not a product of what I see, but it's a product of whatever I focus on. Whatever I focus on is actually going to be magnified, whether it's blessing or cursing, whether it's awesomeness or not so awesomeness. Whatever I focus on is what's magnified. And so that's very, very important. Whatever we focus on is what we will believe. So in Numbers 13, uh, verses 30, number ver it says, but, but Caleb tried to encourage the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go on at once and take the land, he said. We will certainly conquer it. In verses 31 through 33, so, oh man, do we focus on God's blessing and provision like Caleb and Joshua? Or do we focus on the giants of the land like the other ten in Numbers 13, 31 through 33? But the other man who explored the land with him answered, We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. So they spread discouraging reports about the land among the Israelites. The land we explored will swallow up any who go to live there. All the people, who, all the people we saw were huge. We even saw giants. They were the descendants of Anak. We felt like grasshoppers next to them, and that's what we looked like to them. So really what we're running into here is a matter of focus. And with that being said, I just want you guys to know, especially my awesome friend, Miss Becky, as I got a title for this, it's called Refocus. Refocus. So it's not that Caleb and Joshua seen anything different from the other leaders of the tribes. They were all great men. Uh, they were all leaders of each of the 12 tribes. And they were men of faith. They were, they were great men of faith. But still, it's a matter of focus. The men spent 40 days staring at the promise, and somehow along the way they lost their focus. And that is what blows me away, and that's what I want to talk to you guys about today, actually, is, is we are in the middle of transition. We are actually still in the middle of transition. We had this, this virus happen, and, and the world kind of went on shutdown, and now it's beginning to reopen. Um, and we don't really know what things are going to look like. There's a lot of uneasiness. And uh, what we really need to do uh, as brothers and sisters and followers of Christ is refocus. Refocus on Him. Refocus on what it is that He's doing and not be so focused on what's going on with the world. 
So Caleb and Joshua were only able to keep their focus um, because they practice a few disciplines. And, and a lot of us don't like to practice dis discipline. I don't like to practice discipline. Um, I don't like to be disciplined. Even the word discipline, I'm not a big fan of it. But discipline is so needed in order for us to do the things that the Lord has called us to do. I mean, if it wasn't for discipline, I wouldn't be able to generate an income for my family. I, I, have, to, I have to get up and go to the shop at 7 o'clock every single day. If I was not disciplined to do that, I wouldn't make it to work on time, and, and I wouldn't be able to handle the business that I need to get done. So it is vitally important for us to practice discipline in all areas of our life. So uh, Caleb and Joshua, they were only able to keep their focus throughout this whole entire process because they practiced discipline. And so here's three disciplines that they practiced. I'll give them all three to you right now, and then we're going to go over each one individually. The first one is focus what you think. Focus what you think, okay? The second one is focus what you hear. And the third one is focus what you say. Now I want to go back over this. Um, the, the first one is focus what you think. So we're, I want to go back here to Numbers 13, and I want to read verses 1 through 3 to you again. It says, Now the Lord said to Moses, Send men to explore the land of Canaan, the land I am giving to Israel. Send one leader from each of the twelve ancestral tribes. So Moses did as the Lord commanded him. He sent out twelve men, all tribal leaders of, Is all tribal leaders of Israel, from their camp in the wilderness of Paran. So that's what God said. God said, Send men to explore the land of Canaan. That's pretty simple. That's pretty simple. I mean, I'm reading it right there in black and white. Send men to explore the land of Canaan, okay? Now this is, that went from God to Moses. Now from Moses to the leaders, this is what happened. In Numbers 13 from 17 to 20, Moses gave the men these instructions as he sent them out to explore the land. Go northward through the land of the Negev into the hill country. See what the land is like and find out whether the people living there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? Do their towns have walls or are they unprotected? How is the soil? Is, the, is it fertile or is it poor? How many trees are there? Enter the land boldly and bring back samples of the crops that you see. It happened to be the season for harvesting the first grapes. Now, what I want to say here is what the Lord said seems so much more simple than what Moses said. And now, when we start thinking about the things that God never asked us to think about, we start undermining the very confidence that we need to move forward in what God has called us to. It, it, it's really simple. When, when the Lord gives us simple instructions... And, and we stay focused on his instruction, things seem to be very simple. And when we start to focus on things that he didn't ask us to focus on, we begin to undermine or cut away the foundation that's the very confidence that we need to move forward into what he has called us to. So it's super important to capture those thoughts. 2 Corinthians 10.5 tells us all about capturing our thoughts. And I should have marked it, but... I didn't, so you're just going to have to deal with it, deal with me to turn it over there. I can paraphrase it pretty good, but I, I think it's important to actually read it. So 2 Corinthians 10.5, it says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. It is important for us to capture our thoughts. Whatever we think, we need to be sure that we know that we know that we know this is what the Lord said and what the Lord said we need to stick to. We need to not begin to develop our own thoughts and our own opinions or be entertain weird things. We just need to stick to the promises of God. So our self-consciousness is only a byproduct of our failure to be God-conscious. So listen to that again. Our self-consciousness is only a byproduct. What I think about myself, what I think about my circumstances is only a byproduct of my failure to be God conscious. I have to cast down uh, imaginations that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Uh, imaginations or thoughts 
that exalt themselves, that pit themselves against the knowledge of God. Again, we got to capture our thoughts, guys. We have to capture our thoughts. So, number two is focus what you hear. Focus what you hear. Now, I'm going to go through these ones kind of kind of quick. Numbers 13, you or number 13, huh, excuse me. Numbers chapter 13 verse 27, we have a good report. The good report is this was their report to Moses. We arrived in the land that you sent us to see and it is indeed magnificent country. A land flowing with milk and honey. Here is some of its fruit for proof. So the guys are telling Moses, Moses is hearing their report, okay? And then right after that in verse 28, you have a bad report. But the people living here are powerful and their cities and towns are fortified and very large. We also saw the descendants of Anak who are living there. Number 30. So Caleb was listening. When the good report was coming forth, it was okay. But as soon as he started hearing the bad report, he practiced the whole 2 Corinthians 10 5. He captured it. They started giving a bad report, and in verse 30, Caleb shut it down. He said, Enough. Enough is enough is enough. In verse 30, it says, But Caleb tried to encourage the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once and take the land, he said. We will certainly conquer it. <clears throat> Now I said we were. I wanted you guys to read uh, Numbers thirteen and fourteen. So I want to. I want to. There's another example of this in uh, in Numbers chapter fourteen, verses one through four, and it says, "Then the so here goes some murmuring and complaining. You have you have good report, bad report. Caleb shut it down, and immediately it comes right back into murmuring and complaining again." It says uh, in, in Numbers 14, verse 1, it says, Then all the people began weeping aloud. They cried all night. Their voices rose in great chorus of complaint against Moses and Aaron. We wish we had died in Egypt or even here in the wilderness, they wailed. Why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle? Our wives and our little ones will be taken as slaves. Let us get out of here and return to Egypt. Then they plotted amongst themselves. Let's choose a leader and get back to Egypt. And then immediately, right after that, Joshua and Caleb, again, they shut it down in, in, in Numbers 14, verses 7 through 9. It says, Joshua and Caleb said to the community of Israel, The land we explored is a wonderful land, and if the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us safely into the land and give it to us. It is a rich land flowing with milk and honey, and he will give it to us. Do not rebel against the Lord and don't be afraid of the people in the land. They are only helpless prey to us. They have no protection, but the Lord is with us. Don't be afraid of them. Again, guys, we've got to focus on what we hear. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith is what you believe. Whatever we believe, it comes by what we hear. Are we listening to the Lord? Are we listening to his words? Are we listening to brothers and sisters that are encouraging us and, and helping us to focus on, on the word of God? Are we listening to the news? Are we listening to media? Are we listening to Facebook? Are we listening to our, our scared moms and dads and scared brothers and sisters, scared friends, people that are fearing for their lives? Right here, Caleb and Joshua, two different times, two different times he told the people of Israel, do not fear. Don't fear. The Lord is with us. Listen, guys, it's all about what you hear. It's all about what you hear. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Mark 4.24 says, Be sure to pay attention to what you hear. The more you do this, the more you will understand and even more besides. Pay attention to what you hear. Whatever you hear, you will understand that and more of that will be given to you. If if I am constantly feeding myself with, with, with bad news reports and how many people have died from this virus and where it's at and what it's doing, and even now it's, it's the killer hornets. We didn't even got through the virus yet. Now your killer hornets are coming. Oh my goodness. If I listen to that over and over and over, I'm going to begin to believe that. The Word of God says faith comes by hearing. It doesn't come by what we see. It doesn't come by what we feel. It comes by what we hear. It comes by what we hear, guys. I'm telling you. We got to pay attention to what we hear. My faith is not determined by what I see, but what I hear. We have to develop selective hearing. This reminds me of my, my own daughter or my own children, my, my son and my daughter. You know what I mean? We have to develop selective hearing. We have to select to hear God's word and not hear the words of the world. Um, you know, here's an example. Our, our kids or even our grandkids, 
they hear the word toys and they hear the word McDonald's. You say the word McDonald's and you got their attention immediately. They hear you crystal clear. But it's, the struggle is when I ask them to pick up their toys. When I ask them to pick up their toys or clean their room, it's like talking to a wall. They can't even hear nothing that I'm saying. They have selective hearing. You have to train yourself to listen to the word of the Lord. We don't need friends to talk us out of the battle either. And, 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 and I've experienced this. Um, you know, I believe this is where the Lord is taking us. The Lord is taking us to newness, the best days. My best days are ahead of me. Uh, the, the, the Lord's plans are goodness for me. They're for me to prosper. Um, he's, his word says that I will prosper even as my soul prospers. The Lord has good for me. I am his son. I'm chosen. I'm loved. I, I'm focusing on the goodness of God. And then I got, I got friends that are trying to drag me down like, well, the news said, well, the governor said, and I, I understand we have to respect our authorities, but God is the ultimate authority, is he not? God is the ultimate authority. We don't need friends to talk us out of the battle of possessing what the Lord is bringing us into. We need friends that will encourage us. Because you're right, you are a son of God. The Lord does have good for you. Whatever that may be, whether it's restoration, whether it's healing, whether it's education, whether it's a job, whether it's promotion, it doesn't matter. The Lord has goodness. The enemy, or even some of our friends or family are going to tell us we're not ready for that promotion. We don't have the skill set. We don't have the schooling. We don't have A, B, C, D. Are you going to listen to the naysayers? Are you going to believe? Believe that the Lord has good for you. <laughs> oh man, Lord, thank you. Thank you that your word says you will never leave, you will never forsake me. That, that, that I'm your child. That, that, that I am more than a conqueror, Heavenly Father. Lord, I just thank you. I thank you that the hairs on my head are numbered, Lord Jesus. That I don't have to worry about. You provide for me according to your riches and glory, Heavenly Father. Lord, we just stand on your word. And we don't receive the words of the enemy. We don't receive any false word in Jesus' name. Man, God... God loves you guys. I'm telling you, he loves you guys. He, <laughs> he only wants what's good for you. He only wants what's good for all of us. So we need to really focus on what we hear. Focus on what we hear. <laughs> uh, number three is focus on what we say. Uh, numbers 13, 32, and 33. Whew. Numbers 13, 32, and 33. So they spread discouraging reports about the land among the Israelites. The land we explored will follow up any who go to live there. All the people we saw were huge. We even saw giants. There, the descendants of Anak, we felt like grasshoppers next to them. And that's what we looked like. Guys, the ten spread a bad report. Okay, It is so important for we to focus on what we say. They didn't spread a false report. They didn't spread a wrong report. What they saw in the land was very much real. And, and, and it was real that there were big cities. There were big walls. There were big people. They were very powerful. But they weren't deceived in what they saw. What they saw was truth. What they saw was real. They were deceived in what they said. The land will swallow up any who go to live there. Is that a factual statement? I don't think so. I don't think so. We felt and we looked like grasshoppers to them. First of all, how do you know what you look like to somebody else? They were making statements that weren't true. They were making statements that they, they, they were making assumptions and they were verbalizing them. They were saying them out loud. Often where the enemy tries to deceive us in life is we'll be looking at a real situation, but coming to false conclusions. It's, well, look, we're in some wild times right now, but I'm choosing to believe the word of the Lord. I'm choosing to believe God. I, I'm not going to come to false conclusions about how many people are going to die, what these hornets are going to do, if there's going to be a reemergence of A, B, C, D. I'm going to focus on the goodness of God. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Nothing shall by any means harm me. What we say is a direct reflection of what we believe. There's very little wiggle room between what we say and what we believe. We today are looking at very real situations, but the Lord wants us to change the way we speak about it. Let's not be coming to false conclusions, guys. Um, 2 Corinthians 4.13, Paul said, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Whatever we believe is what we speak. Are we going to speak the promises of God or are we going to speak the fear of hell? Pretty simple. Proverbs 18.21 says, There's life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. And the Lord proves it in Numbers 14, verses 26 through 36. Um... <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead and read it to you. 
The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, How long will this wicked nation complain about me? I have heard, the Lord has heard. I have heard everything the Israelites have been saying. Now tell them this, As surely as I live, I will do to you the very thing that I heard you say. I, the Lord, have spoken. You will all die here in this wilderness because you complained against me. None of you who are 20 years older who are 20 years older, older were counted in the census. Time out. What are we in right now, people? What are we in? We are in a national census right now. Anywho, we will enter the land. None of us, hold on, let me see what it says. Because you complained against me, none of you who are 20 years older, older, and were counted in the census will enter the land, and I swore to give you. The only exceptions will be Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. You said your children will be taken captive. Well... I will bring them safely into the land, and they will enjoy what you have despised. But as for you, your dead bodies will fall in this wilderness, and your children will be like the shepherds wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. In this way, they will pay for the faithlessness until the last of you lies dead in the wilderness. Because the men who explored the land were there for 40 days, you must wander in the wilderness for 40 years, a year for each day, suffering the consequences of your sin. You will discover what it is like for you to have me as an enemy. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will do these things to every member of the community who has conspired against me. They will all die here in the wilderness. Then the ten scouts who had incited the rebellion against the Lord by spreading discouraging reports about the land were struck dead with a plague before the Lord. <laughs> That's wild. The Lord heard what they were saying, and he allowed them to experience what they were saying. It wasn't that their reports were false. Uh, it, it was that what they seen was right, but nonetheless, uh, they were deceived in, in, in what they what they said. Um, <laughs> what they seen was true. The cities were big and all of that stuff, but some of the stuff they said was absolutely not true. And uh, I just the the Lord proves it, guys, that, that what we say uh, is going to happen. What we say, He's gonna we're gonna eat the fruit of it, and that's that's so fitting because actually we're we're right now in the Hebraic year of uh, of declaration. What we say is going to happen, and so anywho, uh, today we are standing on the edge of something great. The Lord is wanting to bring us into the promised land of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. What the Lord is wanting to bring us into is actually Galatians 5, 22 and 23. It's the fruits of the Spirit, guys. He's helping us to be led for us to function out of the fruits of the spirits. That is the promised land that we are coming into. We are learning how to exercise these in all areas of our life, not just in church, but actually in our daily life, in the marketplace and in our homes. We are coming into the promised land of exercising the fruits of the spirits. But so often we stand at the edge, never possessing what God has promised because we lack focus. Guys, I'm asking you to refocus during this time. Uh, the, the, this this, this uh, time that is right after Passover, we are only in the middle of it, guys. It, it isn't actually 40 days after Passover, I believe, is May 30th. And we're getting antsy. We need to really refocus and ask the Lord, what is it that you're saying? What is it that you want me to press into, Heavenly Father? How can we help our neighbors and our family members? Help me to silence the lies of the enemy and focus on your word. I want to encourage you guys, please refocus, refocus. Whew. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity to speak to my brothers and sisters. Lord, and I ask that you would convey what I was trying to convey. I ask that you would, again, anoint it and that they would be able to receive it, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask that you would magnify what you want magnified and deaden what you want deadened, Heavenly Father. Lord, I just... I just speak a blessing over all my brothers and sisters. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over them right now. Lord, I just release encouragement and favor and blessings and strength to all of them. Lord, and again, I ask that you would help us all to press into what it is that you're doing. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, I love you guys. And uh, again, I hope that you have grace for me. I hope this message encouraged you. And, and again, just press into the word of the Lord. We love you guys. Have a great week.